Good afternoon. George Hepworth here, Grover Park Consulting. Let's build Mike's mobile library. Today, we're going to take the first of our working screens, which is the publication screen, and we're going to copy that screen from our production version, which you see on your screen now, into the development environment. Before I do that, I want to point out that this working screen has three main sections. The first section is the header across the top. I'm selecting each of the items on the header. Those will go as a group. The second section is the filtering, which occupies the space immediately below the header. We have a filter for a free text search. We have a filter for genres, a filter for publishers, a filter for media types, and a little label which indicates how many publications of each of those types we actually have in our library. We'll copy that over and set it up. And then finally we have the bulk of the screen which is taken up by the gallery in which we can browse or look at in a read-only view all of the publications in our current library. Let's begin. We're ready to start the copy process from the publication screen in the production version to the publication screen in our development version. I've selected the items we're going to copy. Do the copy, control C. I come back, select my blank screen, or my blank publication screen, control V to paste the items in, and they drop into the screen. They're not exactly in the right position, and we'll correct that in a second. First, I want to examine this error. The drop down here tells me where that error is. So we're going to edit that error and verify what I think it is, which is a missing form. Now, you, remember, you will remember that in the Power Apps world, a form is a specific tool which is used to edit or add one new record out of a group of records in a table. That form will be on the screen called edit publication when we get ready to edit our publication. The new form tells us that if we click this icon, which is the plus sign or the add icon, we're going to set this form into new mode. The new form mode allows us to add new records into the record source. We can't do that yet because we're not ready to create the edit publication screen. But because we know what the error is, we can safely ignore it and concentrate on our layout for now. I'm going to start with the left here. This is the publication screen title. That's the main label here. And I'm going to set its X and Y positions relative to the screen so that it goes to the right position. Its X position is correctly set to zero. Its Y position, it dropped in by default to 40. So we're going to change that to 0. And that moves the header label, the publication screen title, to the top of the form. Notice that it left behind our other icons. So we've, we need to set their x and y coordinates in relationship to our label. We'll pick this one, which is the back label. And if we select that icon, it takes us back to the start screen, which is the main menu. We'll set its X coordinate to the left edge of the header label. So we'll say label publication screen title dot X. Now it moves it so that the left edges line up. Y will do the same thing. Publication screen title dot Y. And now it moves into the correct position on the header label and will continue to move in sync with it. The next item here is our app logo. We'll do the same thing. We'll set its Y coordinate first, and that will be equal to the Y coordinate of the app title label. It moves it up. Notice that it's not quite centered the way we want it. We'll fix that in a second. First, we want to set its x-coordinate, which we do, by setting it 
in relationship to the icon in front of it. So the left edge of this icon will be on the exact right edge of the icon in front of it. Its X position is the Y, the width distance from the X coordinate of the icon in front of it. Let's look at its height property to make sure that that is correct. I believe that's where we're off. It's set at 54. We want it to be the same height as our header label, so we'll change its height to label presentation screen dot. And that brought it into line. Now notice that it has a slight padding on the top and the bottom. That's because of the way that particular image fits in that image control. It's not exactly uh, the same dimension, so it leaves a little space. It's not, a, it's not an effect from padding. It's the image itself, which is different. We'll do the same for these two. Uh, actually, let's do this one first. Its X position will be the width of this parent, and the parent is the screen, minus its own width. Excuse me, its X position will be the width of the screen minus its own width. So you just take the width of that icon, move its left edge that distance in, drop it there. For its Y position, we'll link it to the Y position of the label underneath it. We'll do the same for this one. Its Y position and its X position is another calculation. It's this width of the parent minus itself. So we move it with the parent then its own width, and then we move it again to allow for the width of the add icon. So by setting these in relationship to one another and to the label for the header, we allow them to line up exactly edge to edge all the way across. So now our header is all set up and ready to go. The next step will to be to bring in the filtering. I'll do that in my next presentation. We'll wrap it up here come back in our next presentation and do the same process bringing across the row of filters in the publication screen. As always, if you like what you're seeing in this series of presentations on migrating a working relational database application from the access side to the Power App side, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. I will see you next time.